Well, hi everybody, and welcome back to part two of the Bunk Room Minim OSD using it as a standalone OSD with the MWSD software. Part two is all about how to attach the GPS. Although it's not quite the part two I was envisaging because what happens is I don't work Mondays and I kind of use that to um, set up any stuff I need and, and make some content should I need to. But weather this time wasn't very good. I didn't have time to get the whole OSD done and mounted on the plane. And I'm also going away on holiday for a couple of weeks. So rather than sort of delay a, a proper part two, I thought I'll show you how to do the, um, the OSD. I'll walk it around the park physically uh, and then you can see how it works and you can go ahead and do that and then I'll come back actually put it on a plane and we'll see how it performs then. So what I ended up doing is is very quickly making up this big bundle of stuff like this. But let me take you through it. Let me talk about how to wire in the OSD, how to do the software changes, how to configure it. And there's a, a new version of the GUI for this. Um, and we'll go to the footage about me walking around the park and you can see that my max walking speed is about six kilometers an hour. Anyway, let's take a look. Here's the GPS I mentioned last time from Banggood, mainly because it was cheap. You'll notice it's got a lead coming out of it, but when you actually get the device, this isn't there. And obviously I'll put some links in again if you missed the first part, or you could just watch the first part again. So what are the pinouts? There was absolutely no documentation and nothing anywhere to try and work this out. So what I did, I looked at another picture it had and kind of tried to work the pinouts and got the Arduino out and just double checked that I had the pins correct. And um, based on the fact I was able to receive some NMEA strings as shown here, I figured that was okay. So here is a picture of the wide up GPS. And from the orientation point of view of having the antenna upwards, you can see that I've used a red wire for live, black for ground, white for TX and green for RX. TX and RX in this case refer to the GPS actually sending and receiving the information. It's important in this case to have it fully wired with the TX and RX, and I'll come to why that's important in just a second. For the specifics about how to connect up the micro minimum OSD to the FTDI cable and how to flash it, please refer to part one. Uh, I'll assume you've already done that and you, you know um, what's happening here. So we're back in the MWSD software in config.h, and there's a bunch of stuff we changed last time which we're not going to change, like the define uh, white supply micro. Uh, this is the main bit to change. So previously we had no controller just to run the um, voltage. So we're going to comment that back out and we're going to go down, or go up in fact, to GPS OSD U blocks. If you've got the same GPS receiver as I mentioned last time, this has got a U blocks chip on it uh, and this is the one to use. Obviously, if you've got a different GPS, take a look at what it actually can do. Uh, and choose one of these depending on, on what you have. Um, NMEA is generally the strings that they can all produce. U-Blocks and MTK are, are specific makes. The only other thing to check, uh, depending on what you've got there, is your board rate. So you've noticed here we've got a board rate of uh, 115200. Now by default the GPS speaks uh, at 9600 board and this goes back to the reason we've fully wired up the TX and RX on the GPS. So what the U-Blocks can do is speak in its own protocol. So what the program actually does as part of the initialization on a U-Blocks, it will send it a bunch of data to tell it it wants it to go into 115, 200 board or whatever you specify here, and to go into its own protocol, uh, which makes it a little bit more efficient. So that's all you need to change here. Save that, flash the board again and then next we can go to the GUI to set it up with the new information we want. So last time we used the Java based GUI editor which is kind of a bit quirky and weird. What they've actually got now, um, and it was available for the 1.6 release just a little bit hidden away, is they've got a Chrome extension. You will notice it says it's chargeable. The, the answer is it's going to be chargeable for 1.7. Um, at the moment, though, if you go to the MW OSD site and you look around in the right bit of the repository, uh, and that is under the MW OSD GUI, you will find here a how to install piece of text about, it's basically saying how to install this MW OST GUI.CRX. 
which is the raw Chrome extension. So you can download and you can install that now. And as soon as you install it, it will just appear as a regular Chrome extension. Now it's free for 1.6. As soon as it goes to 1.7, it's chargeable. So depending how you feel about that, you know, will influence your decision. It's, it's like it's pound something, so it's not the worst uh, thing ever. But here is what the, the new Chrome configurator looks like. Um, and it's all pretty much almost exactly the same as before, other than it's got a sort of posh new skin, really. So what I've done, I've, I've already configured mine with the GPS because there wasn't really much to it uh, using this thing, certainly. Main voltage, it, it's more sort of tick box now. Main voltage is still displayed. Video voltage, no. Um, no amps, RSI, all this gubbins. Um, I suppose on, on the good side, you, it lets you move things about a lot easier. Uh, and one thing I forgot to mention last time is make sure you got your video signal type right. I'm actually using uh, NTSC because I tend to use 60 frames a second, um, although I'm in a PAL region. So if I'm using 60 frames, that's NTSC. It's 50 frames a second for PAL. Um, what's the exciting thing? All oh, right, the um, the altitude here, which is your normal sort of spot, it, it comes up in a GPS thing. Uh, the time is still there. and it's basic GPS settings. That was the extra thing. If I take those away, oh, like that, this is the only thing I added. So GPS information, GPS coordinates. I actually added this thing called GPS altitude here, which I think is altitude above sea level. I've put it on there to test it and see if it's different to that. And you can have an angled home if you like as well, but I couldn't see where that put it. But basically, this arrow here is your home arrow, which is quite useful. Um, I also put a compass on, which I think is quite useful. You can have a heading as well if you want, but you could just look as well. Um, yes, I've left all this as default. I've got uh, distance uh, and altitude alarms. Um, it's not something I've really sort of thought about yet. This was just a very sort of quick setup. Uh, this is the simulator. So this is all really very similar to, to how it was before. Uh, and then you can do all the normal things with the fonts that you can read write. I have to say, what I haven't quite figured out, it, it shows this text here that looks a bit like a time thing, which doesn't show up on my display, and I'm not sure it's there. Ditto with the whole disconnected thing, that's, that's not showing up anyway. So this isn't perfect. I'm not sure if I like it better than the old one. I suppose if I was moving stuff around, it's a little bit easier because you've got like a drop down box and stuff but you know it's okay it does the same job um, anyway so once you've got your GPS activated these bits and anything else you want and if you want to um, you know go ahead and move things around like the sat indicators put it right in the middle of the screen if you want you can certainly do so for me I took the sort of default layout just for my test so let's go get to that test now so this is a full picture of my quick and dirty setup. I wondered if I should sort of label this and try and explain what I did, but rather than that, here's the full picture and I'll go through and kind of explain the wiring if I can as, as best as possible. Okay, so let's run through the setup quickly. Uh, at the end here, you'll notice I've got a JST, this is where the battery would go. This splits off and provides the battery voltage uh, into the micro minimum itself, another one goes off to the ESC. The ESC then provides power to the receiver, and the receiver then provides power back to the GPS and back to the micro minimum OSD. So this one is the same as last time with the ground and the live. What we have here is the um, transmit and receive cables which go back to the GPS along with the GPS's live um, and ground which is 3 to 5 volts which go back to receiver. Meantime over here we have uh, video in coming from the Firefly and video out in this occasion is going straight to this uh, DVR but this would normally go of course to your VTX. I did record a few little pieces on my phone in the park, but it was so windy it got destroyed by wind noise. So we just get straight into it. And this is me turning on the whole system here. I've got the 
camera on and it's just getting some satellites already. It doesn't lock in an actual position until you get to at least five satellites, during which time the attitude all goes a bit weird and then seems to sort itself out again. So there was sound recording on the DVR, but basically what I do is walk a full lap. So I'll speed some bits up and I'll cut to myself as I talk. Oh, I just told my GPS plug wrong. That's better. <laughs> okay. Direction is right. Oh, so I think it tends to look okay at the moment. I just managed to turn my GPS upside down, which is why the sats just dropped to zero. Attitude looks a bit weird. Direction looks good. I can't really see my screen very well. That's the only problem. But let's see if we can walk all the way around and see if it tells us uh, it's, it's okay. I might have to look at this when I get back. Between trying to hold a bunch of electronics and dangling along and uh, not being, being able to see the screen, I can't really tell what's happening. So come for a walk with me. Good, you can see the screen a little bit better this slide, and um, the home arrow is pointing exactly towards the bench. Uh, from which you won't be able to see. Uh, distance, I can't quite tell, but I'll do the full lap and see if it stems down to something reasonable. Satellites seem to have stuck on eight. Not particularly happy holding a bunch of electronics close to the GPS, but we'll see how that is. Well, the low voltage alarm seems to uh, work quite well. That's now telling me that battery's hit 10.5. Pretty accurate. This is what I've been doing. Nearly back round. Well there you go, that was my little test. It obviously wasn't the test I wanted to do, but that will be coming. However, for what the price was, which is somewhere between 10 and 12 pounds, depending on what price they've got it on and the currency fluctuation, that is pretty full function for a, a, a sort of basic GPS, which will give you position, speed, height, direction home. I think that's quite impressive. Um, obviously, my next thing to do will be to put it on a plane and see how it performs. Also, maybe play with there's two pins for RSSI, obviously one's ground, and you can also use that as a screen switcher. So I'll have an experiment there and decide what I want to do with that, but mainly it's to get it on a plane now and see if it actually works very well. It seemed to work fine for walking around a park, although the attitude was a bit weird, but we'll, we'll follow that up and we'll see what happens. But um, anyway, in the meantime, I hope that's useful if you want to jump on ahead and, and get on and get your GPS installed. It's pretty easy as you can see. Other than that, I'll be back in a couple of weeks and hopefully get on a plane. See you for now. Bye.